So as you already know me, I can skip the introduction of myself. So this is another project called Open Provisioning Framework, which is a collaboration with the Forschungszentrum Informatik in Karlsruhe, where we extended a little bit uh, the, the skim, schema part. And now yeah, I want to talk a little bit about Nextcloud user provisioning using Skim 2.0. So what is user provisioning? We see it as a core task in hosting. You have to create new users. You have to create groups. You have to yeah, update user settings like passwords, quota, aliases, and so on. And you have to maintain additional concepts, for example, in the area of uh, Nextcloud, for example, shared resources, groups, and so on. And of course, it's an important uh, yeah, basic for data portability and interoperability, because you, you need the bucket created first, then you can move data in. And yeah, you probably all know known the LDAP standardization and, and stuff around that, but there is a lack of standardization efforts since that here. And most service providers currently use either a legacy provisioning API or no API at all. So there is where uh, SKIM come into place, which is, uh, yeah, the, uh, the abbreviation for system for cross-domain identity management. It's also a JSON-based format, um, which offers data formats and protocols for user provisioning. So you have, on the one hand, basic concepts like user and groups, and you also have extension mechanisms there. It's standardized by the IETF, you can find the RFCs there, uh, published 2015. And we, in this open provisioning framework, uh, edit specific extensions here for email and groupware hosting to that standard. So the goal here is to have a better client-server interoperability for provisioning tasks. And what we figured out is that it's quite common already in the SAS area in the SaaS ecosystem where from an identity provider there is some scheme, schema used to provisioning users in the SaaS app. I will have an example for that later. If you want to see more details, yeah, go to the websites here, Simple Cloud Info and the other one here. What we have done here in the project that's quite similar to what we have done in the, uh, in the JMAP project I presented prior. So we also created libraries here to easily implement Skim for Java and PHP-based applications, which you can find in our GitHub repository. And we actually implemented a Skim API for Postfix admin. And as we love Nextcloud, we do, did it also for Nextcloud uh, based on the work. It's on the next slide, which IndieHost Indie Hoster started at the next, uh, next Gov hackathon this April. So we improved that support by uh, the un using the underlying uh, libraries we provided. And with that libraries, you can uh, yeah, implement cloud-based cloud uh, identity management workflows here with Skim. We've tested that with Azure ID. There is still one uh, pull request pending here that's fully working with Nextcloud. But there is also the uh, key clock identity manager, which you can use with the, the indie, ho indie hosters key clock skim client. And we yeah, also implemented some um, command line interface for it. The idea here is, because the project is still running, to extend that more with uh, additional features like quota, group folders, and so on. And yeah, that's the example normally you have. What you can see here is that it also always starts with um, uh, an HR system, for example, in, in larger companies, which then provisioning currently still with legacy APIs to a cloud identity provider. And that uses then Skim to provision the users on different uh, SaaS services here, like Dropbox, Zoom, or Nextcloud, and so on. And the authentication, that's still something different then that can be used by uh, 
uh, single sign on and so on. So yeah, that's it from the current st status here in the project and I can hand over to you. Thanks. Frank, thank you so much. A lot of knowledge going around. Thank you so much for that.